Okay, so I'm in Photo P. And in order to get Photo P to run a little bit faster, I took its image size back down to 8 by 10 inches. But because it's a vector file, I can always uh, make it any resolution larger and it will work. And I've added two offsets in my layer styles. I've added the stroke, which is just the solid white outline, and I've added an outer glow. And I added some noise to that outer glow. And I can combine them. I think I'm going to, and I can always edit them. I'm going to make that stroke a little bit smaller. What's nice is when I change the size, this is maybe uh, something unique to Photo because I haven't seen Photoshop do this. It actually shrunk proportionally my layer styles, which was nice. So it was 33 when I was at 16 by 20, and then it shrunk automatically to 17 when I made it to 8 by 10. So that's kind of a neat discovery. But I'm going to take it down a little bit. Whoa, jumped up there. So let's try maybe um, eight, eight pixels on each side. And then I can play with the outer glow options. And I'm going to just take its spread down a little bit more. Make it a little bit more subtle and it's sized down a little bit. So I'm going to take it spread down to maybe 12 and it's size to, let's see, 30. You just try different things. Say OK. So now that looks nice and clean. Each shape seems nicely represented. Things aren't blurring into each other too much. So let's say I like that offset. That's my favorite offset. How do I now save this and post it and use it? Right. It's a good idea, of course, to save it as a PSD because we now have multiple layers and multiple effects on it, right? But now to save it as a PNG to post to Canvas and to Imgur, I want to turn off all those background layers. But the offset is still there. You can see the white back on the checkerboard. And then you want to save it or export it as a PNG so it doesn't fill in the background with white. Okay, so there we have. Then I go to my downloads, and I can see it. And then if I put this into my assignment folder and rename it, so this I'll call and I'll say, and graphic designers have to do this all the time. This is my black. So now if I go to a site that's dark and I bring this in with the offset, it will show up nicely. Much better than this. All right, so that's my black logo solution. So I have my sketch and my black logo solution, which you need to add an offset to in order for it to show up in an Imgur portfolio. In Canvas, this is so close to white that it shouldn't even make a difference to have the offset, but it just shows how versatile the image is. And then think of how that works on a t-shirt, right? If it's on like a red t-shirt, even just as a black logo, this will have red with that white offset around it, which strengthens it. Yeah, you can barely see the offset, if at all. Okay. So that's that, that portion of the assignment completed. Next,
coloring it. So you've saved it as a PSD, you have your different backgrounds. I like to color it using gray. So just like you can do offsets and strokes, you can also do color overlays and gradients and all of those other things we've done before with layer styles. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that whole layer by hitting Command J. And that will duplicate the effects as well. I'll turn off the one underneath and I'll turn off the stroke and the outer glow for now in the effects. Then I'll open up the effects and play with color overlay because maybe I want the whole thing to be one color. Maybe I still want it to be a dark color, but I just don't want it to be black. You know, maybe I want it to be a dark blue. Right? So that's one way you color it. Along with coloring, you can do gradients. Come on. And we've played with this before when we made the skies, right? So I can do like a subtle gradient. And remember, these are laying on top of each other. So in order for the gradient to show up, I have to dim the opacity of the color overlay so that the, the straight linear gradient from black to white shows up underneath. And that gives it a high tech feel. Then of course I can add back in the outer glow if I like that. But I can also give the outer glow a color on this version. So many options, like maybe a really light blue. So this is just to show you, and it can be a lot of fun to play with. And then of course you can even give it a texture. So I'll have to zoom in so you can see this. But often with my color logos, I don't like it to just be flat computer color, even with a gradient. I like it to have built into it a little bit of texture, kind of like the noise and the outer glow. So if I zoom in with all of those features on, the only one that's turned off is stroke. Texture falls under bevel and emboss. So you can see it's highlighted on that side, it's shaded on that side, it's like it's embossed in. But let's turn on the texture. Come on. There we go. And we can now pick the texture. I don't like this embossed kind of pinwheel texture. Let's get to those individual options. And you get to pick the pattern. And I want just these are the default ones within photo key. But I want one that's more just like a, a broken kind of page pattern, like a paper texture. Come on, it's going slow again. It's annoying. Okay, and then once you pick it, you should be able to set the depth. Now these are processing heavy things to play with but worth playing with. This doesn't want to play with the texture for me. Let's see. But all of these give you a lot of control and they're all applied to your vector. So you're never going to lose quality. 
All right, so it has the right texture. Now I get to play with the scale and the depth. And you can see how it's breaking it up a little bit. It's a little grid-like, but it's very subtle. I like it. It's kind of like a construction paper. Just so you can get a sense of the ways you can play with it. Okay. And we tend to overdo things. I know I always tend to overdo things. But they can always be turned on and off here as well. And even set a different uh, opacities. Okay, so now let's see what that looks like on a black background. Ooh. Right. And on a white background. Yeah, nice and clear. So how do we post and save that? Well, same thing. I turn off all the backgrounds. Right? And I also turn off the black copy of the logo underneath. I make sure to save it as a PSD with all of these options built in. And then export it as a PNG with the backgrounds turned off. Go to wherever my computer downloads, and then move these files. These are now my colored logo solutions, and rename them into my assignment six folder. What is so? The question was, why don't you use uh, simultaneous contrast? So simultaneous contrast is when you put two really contrasted colors right next to each other and the eye makes them vibrate, right? So you can certainly try. You could, you could do a color fill that is uh, a dark purple, and then you can do the outer glow or an offset that is a bright yellow. And because those are complementary colors, it will be kind of an uncomfortable vibration that happens. So yeah, in coloring, you can play, play with any variations your heart desires. White and black is actually already a simultaneous contrast. But you can add the color into it as well by using complements. So it just depends whether you want your, your logo to be soothing to the eye or whether you want it to be a little bit aggravating um, to get attention. You know, there's lots of ways to go. So that's my PSD, my color logo PSD. And then my PNG. My color PNG, I'm going to add and post, just like I did my black with the offset. And it should show up on the dark background and also work on the light background of canvas. So we're talking about something that is clear and versatile and as engaging as you can make it. Now that's a very simple way of doing color, right? But there's more specific kind of coloring you might want to do. So for instance, I might want my dog's tongue to be red. So how do I do that without having to go back to the vector program? Because I could, I could go back to the vector program and build a red shape behind the tongue. You know, just cut it out of a red vector shape. But what I love about black shape logos there it is, is that the shapes completely contain everything. They're like perfect outlines for the most part. So that's one color option, and that completely fulfills the assignment, right? But what if I want to go to Photo P, and I'm going to now duplicate my color vector layer, and then play more with it. This gets a little bit more complicated, but you'll see how it works. Now, I'm not going to rasterize it, but I'm gonna add a new layer on top of it. And I'm just gonna call this new blank layer color fills, okay? Which is different than color overlay. Color overlay means it replaces the vector shape with color. 
color fill means it will fill with 